Hello and you're very welcome to episode 24 of The Attic Sessions, Where Does Time Go? Um, and today we are in the company of two of the pre most preeminent landscape poets in the country at the moment, um, Jane Clark and Geraldine Mitchell. You're very welcome to The Attic. Um, and we're going to talk about poet and place. We had a conversation um, about this, the three of us at the Bray Literary Festival last year, so we thought it would be a good idea to try and capture it um, on, on film. Um, so let me tell you a little about both. Um, Jane is living in Wicklow, originally from a farm in Roscommon, and her debut collection, The River, won the Listowel Writers Week Poetry Collection Prize, um, and was also shortlisted for the Royal Society of Literature on Dace Award, which I think has just been won by Pas Pascal Pas Petit. Uh, well done, Pascal, if you're watching. Um, and uh, Jane also uh, won the Hennessy Literary Award uh, for Emerging Poetry in 2016. And Geraldine Mitchell is a Dubliner who has lived in France, Algeria, Spain and the UK and now is, is living in County Mayo in the beautiful um, hinterland of Lewisburg. Um, she won the Patrick Kavanagh Award in 2008 and has published three collections of poetry um, all with Ireland House and the most recent being Mountains for Breakfast. Um, she has also written novels for young people and a biography of um, Muriel Gahan. So as I said we're thrilled to have you both in the attic um, and I wanted to start by asking both of you whether your first poetic impulses were inspired by the landscape. Were, you know when you began to write was it about the place that you found yourself in? Jane, maybe if we start with you. Yeah, well, for me, that was the surprise. I didn't know what, what I would write, what I would be writing about. And I, because I only started to write in my early 40s, so it was relatively late. Uh, but what happened was I went back. I found myself being brought back to the farm where I'd grown up. And that that's where I got a lot of my imagery and that the, the place was mixed with the people, the way of life, and my memories yeah. and my, you know, so much of my upbringing. But it, it, I suppose it, sh it surprised me and it showed me how important place is in who we become and in our imagination. Because I would be much more aware of psychological development because I was a psychotherapist. Mm. That, was, that was the way I was coming at life, mm. mm -hmm. in a way, from that internal life. And of course I realised that, that what's around you it shapes you incredibly, mm -hmm. but it was poetry that taught me that, mm -hmm. and that also that we get that that in what we see around us as well, we get the metaphors to explore what's going on internally as well. So, you know, so for and and I s go on being surprised at how that's how I keep going back. Mm -hmm. to nature, not necessarily to the farm, but keep mm. going back to nature, to the outside world, to find ways of talking about internal mm -hmm. things. Yeah. And would that ch chime with you, Jeremy? No, not really, no. And and although we, we started writing poetry about the same time, I right. think, yeah. yes. don't you think? More yeah. or less? I think you were um, a bit earlier than me. Before. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, I think landscape now is, is what informs what I write. But to begin with, um, no, it was the excitement of just producing poems and, and surprising myself. But I think because I had no, I have no kind of rich seam to, to, to mine of, of childhood memories. Um, I, I, you know, five years of boarding school in Scotland and then, uh, you know, moving. I, I needed to get out of Ireland. I left quite, quite um, purposefully. Um, so it's really been since I uh, I, I sort of worked through all the poems I needed to write in some way mm -hmm. uh, about the, the, the interior, I suppose, the, the you know, ghosts you want to, to lay or, or just ideas, I, I mean just ideas that I wanted to write about, um, which is not necessarily the, the best way to go. But um, 
Uh, so it's been a, a, diff a absolutely different route. I've also, I was just thinking, um, thinking about what about today. I have a friend who once said, you, you sound like a teapot. Because I kept saying, when I've settled, I'll do such and sure. such. And when I'm settled, and I don't think I'll ever be settled. I'm not, I don't settle like tea, you know. <laughs> um, so, so we'll come back to what, you know, how the landscape is, is in my work now. But uh, a, a different, a different, a different, a, a different route. route. Yeah. yeah. Um, so the, the because I'm also interested in the fact that both of you grew up in one place, but settled in another, and so I'm wondering: is there a sort of a a dialogue, conscious or unconscious, between that place of origin and the place where you are now? No, I don't feel that at all. I think. And it's not something you know necessarily you know think is is a good thing, but I definitely kept uprooting myself. So, um, so there's no, there's no 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 dialogue with where I came from really. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and for me, I I think that there is. It's 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 interesting that I'm you know I now live on the other side of the country and I live amongst mountains. Okay, because it was Roscommon. Roscommon is where I grew mm. up, and Roscommon is flat. You know, there's an odd hillock and that's it. And I live amongst mountains now, so it's very, very different. And yet what's the same is the beech trees are the same and the rowan trees are the same and, you know, the, the processes of nature. And it's funny because I feel like I went from the Ros sheep farming is so important in Roscommon yeah. and sheep farming is so important in Wicklow. So there are, you know, there are, are similarities. And I think living in the country uh, is very important for my writing mm -hmm. because that's what I'm looking at all the time. That's what I'm walking in, and that's you know. So I'm I'm continually engaged with um, the natural world, mm -hmm. you know, around mm -hmm. me as as Geraldine mm -hmm. is because mm -hmm. I know where Geraldine lives, and she lives in a stunningly mm -hmm. beautiful place. Mm -hmm. Another type of scenery because it's mm -hmm. sea and mountain mm -hmm. that you have, mm -hmm. you know. And I think when you live in these these places, it, it just it, it enters you, yeah. Yes. Uh, it's funny, uh, there's yeah. uh, um, uh, Sarah Hall, who's a, a, an English novelist and short story writer, short stories mostly, who lives up in Northumberland in, in the, the wild sort of Wuthering Heights um, scenarios. And somebody said to her, you know, it must be one. Uh, they say to me, oh, you must write great poems um, with a, that wonderful senior, scenery around you. And it's, it's actually not like that. When it's where you are and, and where you, I've nearly 20 years full time now in the West and 30 years going to that same spot. Um, it's just what's around you. So you don't even think, ah, I'll, you know, there's a nice sea, I'll describe the sea sort of yeah. thing. It yeah. just becomes part of the way you think, what, yeah. what you see every day, yeah. what you observe. Yeah. I mean, the, I think the, 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 however, however well you know a place, you still, I'm still fascinated by every morning, within an hour, the sea can change colour four mm. or five times. Mm. Mm. Um, so that's all going on, but you're not going, wow, you know, it's not a wow mm -hmm. thing. It's, it's just part of, it becomes part of who you are mm -hmm. and how you think and how you write uh, poems, really. Mm -hmm. Just just this mm -hmm. morning, and it's part of the sort of the insomniacal kind of early morning reading I find myself doing on my phone. There was an article about the fact that the disruption of people's circadian rhythms through light pollution and, and urban living is is basically going to create a very depressed yeah. population yeah. Uh, you know looking down 10 mm, 20 mm, years mm, from yeah. now that we have because we will have completely lost touch yeah. with the mm, natural mm, rhythms mm. of yeah. of light and dark and that mm. sort of thing um, so so where you both are yeah. presumably there is a much more direct connection with you know natural light natural dark that you know passing of seasons with light as well as um, you know what's happening to the foliage yeah. or whatever. So yeah. I know some people are, are kind of shocked that I don't, I don't ever close my curtains or blinds, and I so I wake up to whatever's happening out my window. Yeah. You know, in the winter it'll be dark, and now it's it's light from sort of uh, you know five. Well, yeah, and and what you were saying there reminds me that you know some people would be critical of right nature writers who write, who use nature metaphorically, because mm. they say that's another way of humans using nature rather than letting it be itself. So appropriation. Appropriation. Yeah. Whereas 
I feel it's inevitable that we see those metaphors in nature yeah. Yeah. because just as what yeah. you were saying, that cycle of, yeah. of, you know, of birth at the moment. I mean, May, you know, is bursting out all over. Yeah. It's all about buds coming yeah. out, leaves coming out. And when you see you know, the leaf of a beech tree, it reminds you of the skin of a baby. It's just yeah. absolutely. Yeah. And I don't know how you can't. I think you can't stop yourself yeah. finding metaphor yeah. in yeah. nature. Yeah. 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 And and though what one wants to do as well as a writer is is see it for itself and let it have its own being yeah and you know i hope that i do both of those you know yeah. so that nature you know the world around me is inspirational but it also gives me metaphors it presents me with metaphors yeah. and gives me language that other people relate to and that other people have such strong associations mm, to mm, mm. yeah you yeah. know these you know like like a sheaf of wheat like so many people have some association of that, maybe from the Bible, maybe you know, yeah. from other poetry yeah. they've yeah. read. But it 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 does something. It touches them in a certain way. Yeah. So yeah. I think that's what happens through yeah. write, r writing of 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 the rural life, or writing of nature, or writing yeah. of place. Yeah. It's what it does, what, what it re how it rings a bell for other people when they read yeah. it. Because we are not consciously going thinking, oh, there's a great metaphor for such and such. And I was just yeah. thinking a line, um, because my, my th th the third collection, Mountains for Breakfast, is, is, is landscape. Yeah. I mean, it's full yeah. of it. But it's not nature writing. And no. I think that's something yeah. that's, that's absolutely different. But a yeah. line like I was thinking, the wind has thrown a curtain, a curtain of snow across the wind. No, the wind has thrown a curtain of snow across our window. I don't think it's that because I wouldn't have a wind and window. But anyway, but so you've got that's it's fact. There's yeah. the wind, there's the snow, and it's up against the window. Yeah. But yeah. it's saying so much more. Yeah. yeah. But you don't go looking for it. It's yeah. just. Yeah. It's there for you. Yes. <laughs> you know. But but yeah. if I lived in a city, I'd be using city language. I think. Yes. Wouldn't I? I wonder because so, so many of us kind of try to escape the the. And I'm remembering one of the very first poems that I wrote when I was working at the Irish Insurance Federation. So in a little red brick office block at the top of Harcourt Street, um, where there's a, a, a tiny view of a bit of blue. And I'm going to Oscar Wilde and, and, and the Ballad yeah, of Reading yeah, yeah, Jail yeah, for my yeah, inspiration because yeah. I could see nothing remotely usable. Yeah, but I but think somebody like Tom Kinsler, I think, on the other hand, can walk around mm, yes. the city of Dublin and, and find yes. endless possibilities. Mm -hmm. yes. so. But and I think that, sorry, Jane. No, well, just Peter Sir as well. Dublin is his his mm. landscape. Yeah. And Jess Trainer, for example. Sure. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. and she's in Ballybock and she's the mm -hmm. Royal Canal mm -hmm. and yeah. she's, you know, the herons and the, you know, she's, you know. So there's, there is the Dublin poets mm. who do that very well yeah. as well, you yeah. know. Mm. I forgot what I was going to say. Sorry, <laughs> sorry. No, sorry. no, 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 yeah. no. You, 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 I suppose your, your original point was that it's almost an accident of location that Oh yes, what I, was, what I was going to say, the danger is then that you see the country as this sort of... Um, Tritty. Yeah. 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 And, and, yeah, and and that you relate to it. You, you, you kind of airbrush out the people who live there. Yeah. Yeah. And you yeah. see it as just this wonderful playground of beautiful things. Whereas I've been there now, as I say, 20, nearly 20 years. You know, I'm, 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 I'm one of them. I'm not, I'll never be one of them. But I mean, the, my neighbours are my friends. And I know, you know, it, it's their place too. Yeah. It's not just yeah. there for me to make poems from. Yeah. I don't know, that's not really clear. But do you know what I mean? I think there's a danger of seeing, seeing... Well, it's the pastoral, isn't it? Yeah, and I that shepherdesses and, and, and yeah, you know, that yeah. Yeah. Fine I, I just reject as that to. completely. Yeah. yeah, which makes me think of Kavanagh mm. yes. and, and the the Great Hunger, for example, yeah. and and, yes. and you know his rural reality yes. was you know farmers, celibate farmers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I was yeah. going to use a word which I won't because we're we're always ahead of the threshold on the attic session, but pleasuring himself in front of the fire yeah, and, yeah, and, yeah. and, you know, the, 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 the bleakness. Yeah. Yeah. But, but again, you see, I take issue with that as well. Of course that's true. But then city people think, oh, it's all bachelor farmers, you know, in, yeah. in torn coats and everything. Yeah. It's not, you know? Yeah. I do, but <laughs> but Kavanagh, of course, he. I mean, he's celebrated as well. He yeah. really celebrated. Oh, you did, he, you he did, did yeah, both. Yeah, he yeah, showed yeah, brutality yeah, 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 yeah. and the isolation and the alienation. 
but he really uh, he loved yeah. the grass and the hedges Every and the ditches and as much as he hated yeah. them yeah. you know and he yeah. he he, yeah. he manages yeah. to do both yeah. which i think is 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 a frequent uh, issue for people living in the country or you know because it can feel trapping yeah it can feel mm, alienating. Mm. It can feel mm. narrow, yeah. and I think he explores that yeah, really well. Yeah, yeah. And yet, in epic, he's he says this is this is where the Odyssey could have yeah, been written. Yeah, 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 so yeah. he does both. Yeah, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Are you conscious, both of you, of other writers who have been, you know, traversing your territory, if you like, or you're traversing their territory, or like, is that something that you 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 think about? I'm, I mean, I, I'm aware of it. I mean, the Mayo's stiff with um, poets and, and Kevin Barry has a wonderful line in his short story the, um, the Fjord of Killery where um, there's a bony arse poet on every rock sort of thing <laughs> to, so something I, I know bony arse comes into it um, and poets um, so I mean but some wonderful poets but I don't feel I, I, what I'm doing I think is different uh, but, you know there's Sean Lysett there's, there's Michael Longley obviously uh, Ger Reedy all fabulous poets yeah. Um, and more. It's very dangerous to start naming names. Um, so very conscious of it, but but different. I mean, for example, I'm very. I'm. I'm in. I mean, I'm not comparing myself for one second to Mike Longley, but we're in the same territory. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I'm an all year round person, and he's not so much. And and we're doing different things. We're just doing different things. Yeah. What I wanted to 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 bring in is is. Charles Wright, the American poet, is someone I just have, have was hugely um, inspired by, and he's he says la he talks about landscape as a lever of of transcendence. So there's something, and that's an area I'm really interested in, the sort of poetry and spirituality, mm -hmm. um, which is a very tricky area because we're so um, um, our minds have been a bit distorted by religion in Ireland, and we can't really talk about it without mm -hmm. feeling threatened in some way or that the language is going to be isn't ours to use or anyway but so I that's something I feel quite quite mm -hmm. strongly about all different different area and, and and I mean the the, the occasional times that I've visited Mayo and particularly yeah. around that area where you are and, and Croke Patrick such a a potent symbol yeah, of yeah something yeah, yeah, yeah. spiritual yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and, and, and whatever that is, you, you, you know, you can't be blind yeah, to yeah, it. Yeah, and yeah. I think if, you know, you allow your imagination to to follow whatever sort of route it wants there, mm -hmm. you, you know, you, you can't not yeah. engage with mm -hmm. that. Um, mm -hmm. What about you? Are you, are you sort of conscious of, of other the well-trodden path. Ah, like. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I'm just so glad all of those paths have been trodden before. You know, obviously, you know, Paddy Cavan would be a huge influence. And, you know, we studied him in school. And I loved him in school because he he was he was like one of our own. Yeah. We knew what he was talking about. Yeah. Um, but I, I mean, obviously, Yeats, but, you know, Heaney. Um, but then, uh, you know, reading Paul Meehan and the field in Finglas and the garden, the back garden and, you know, so that whole where she finds her, her inspiration and where she did, that was very important when I came across that mm. work. Al mm -hmm. Alice Oswald, Kathleen Jamie, you know, so many people who are writing. And, and it's that thing that you, you, you find yourself pulled to the poems, you're, you're reading a poem and then it sets you off. Mm. Mm. you know, on one of your own, mm. you know, mm. or Elizabeth Bishop, you know, so, so, you know, it's yeah. such a wealth of, of people who've been there before me, you know, Robert, Robert Frost. I mean, I'm sure my dry stone wall poem was influenced by Robert Frost. Mm. I remember yeah. discussing it, you yeah. know, his poem and discussing that with my mother and father and, you know, talking about, you know how he used that metaphor so well yeah. that the whole thing about the neighbour, the relationship yeah. with the neighbour, and how that's so important in farming. You know, and well, then, here's a segue now because yeah. you've mentioned dry stone walls, and I wanted to ask about activism. And one of the most kind of recent uh, controversies is the decision by somebody to remove dry stone walls from the Burren and yeah. replace them with wire fences or steel barriers, yeah. and. I'm wondering about, well, about the idiocy of that, but about is activism an essential part of writing about 
place, do, do both of you find that, you know, there'll be a desire to protect or to comment on those things that... I don't think it comes into my poetry. I mean, it may, may be me in my life yeah. <clears throat> could, could take a sta stand, stand on, on different things. But I don't see me feeling as a, as a poet that that's what I should be doing. I mean, if it happened to come into something, but mm. I just feel it quite separate. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I hate, hate. I, 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 I was aware of that burn thing, but I haven't followed it. I, I mean, the, 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 there are grants for, for fences, and I, I, I dislike the cement posts that are going up now, and the fact that barbed wire tends to be green rather than, mm -hmm. do you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, I would never put, I don't think mm -hmm. I'd, unless, I can't see myself writing about mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. in poetry. Yeah. 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 The, the, way, the way I look at it is that we protect what we love. And I think poetry can have a role in, in helping us realise what it is we love or uh, opening our eyes to something we hadn't seen. The you know, so, for example, when I lived in Roscommon, I didn't think there was anything about Roscommon. Yeah. I just wanted to get away from Roscommon. Yeah. And so now when I read, po you know, when Roscommon people read my poems, sometimes they're amazed at their place name, like Cremully is in a poem. One of, you know, this neighbour said to my brother, you know, you know, she's named Cremully. So in the naming, in the, the putting these things into poems, we are celebrating mm. them and mm. we are marking them. And I think that's a tie, that is a, t a way of activism, mm. you know, be yeah. because you're you're highlighting the beauty and ordinariness the extraordinaryness yeah. in, you know so that then when somebody crosses the shannon and they suddenly see these dry stone yeah. walls because you you could cross the shannon and not even notice it depends where you're yeah. looking mm, yeah so i think poetry can can guide the eye yeah, um, yeah. which is a, a form of activism, but e whether you do it for that reason or not, is yeah. it's more celebration. Yes, yeah, celebration. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 it's about yeah. love in some ways. Yeah. 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 But I think just one little lip before we go on, Nessa. I think the thing I was saying about um, transcendence and so on, it's more that it, it, it's it's not so much Croke Patrick. It's it's the writing of the poems creates yeah. the the sense of the of the of the of the sacred or the. Yes. You know, I mean, Longley yes. talks about this, the poetry and its yeah. its potential for yeah. for the sacerdotal or something, yeah. he says. Yeah. So rather um, than being responsive, it's creative. I think it is, yeah, the, the, the process of, of um, I mean, I found, I, mean, I spent about a day trying to find this Wallace Stevens, and I couldn't find the quote anywhere, but I finally found it. He says, when one has abandoned the idea of God, or when one has abandoned belief in God, poetry is the essence that takes its place in the redemption of life, in life's redemption. That's a huge statement. Mm, mm. But I have to say there's something there because I fell out with religion very early and I, then I found poetry and, mm, mm. and it's, it's indefinable. It's, 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 we ask the questions in poetry, we don't, we don't give the answers. But there's something there that I just wanted to, you know, mm. for me it's, it's, it's something that comes from the reading and writing in poetry plus the celebration of place, perhaps, mm, that, yeah. that, uh, mm, that yeah. is, is really important. I think, and I think we don't say it enough because poetry can become quite a competitive sport that people want, you know. Yeah. They, they, it's like, I think we, sometimes we lose sight of the, the, um, the dynamite that, that, that yeah. poetry can yeah. be. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, pro the, 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 the product overtaking the awareness of just the importance of the process mm. of, of, mm. Of, of, of writing. Well, it would be lovely to hear some of your work at this point. Okay. Um, yeah. Jane, do you want to go? Okay. Um, I, I thought I'd, I'd read Among the Cows because it's, for me, it's set in Donegal up in Port Nabla. And, um, but when I was writing this, I am seeing uh, Donegal, I, you know, from where my grandmother grew up, um, and so you know, so for me, the writing of poetry is very visual. I'm, I'm seeing in my mind, and it's from what I see that I'm finding, uh, that, you know, the metaphor. Among the cows, her father knew where to find her. She liked to stand among the cows. They smelled of winter, and the dark. They let her lean into their warm bellies. 
She watched them in the fields as they moved solid and slow, wrapped their tongues around sweet grass. She found her own tune in their lowing, learned to milk as soon as her hands were strong enough to squeeze. When her mother died, her father wore his grief the way he wore his Sunday suit, as if it belonged to someone else. She would listen to the calves calling for days when weaned, until their voices, exhausted, faded like mist from the fields. Lovely. Thank you. And do you have another one? Okay, well then I'll read um, a newer one and, and because I'm working on this uh, uh, sequence of poems about the First World War and I, I, what was interesting is that there's a good bit of place in those as well and I'm imagining this man on the front and uh, so this poem is in his, mm -hmm. his um, voice. After we're gone, farmers will level this ground, backfilling shell holes and trenches, picking coins, buttons, tin cups, boot laces, shaving mugs, razors, from soil that has buried letters, curses, men and horses. They'll never know one of the lads keeps celandine and meadowsweet in a whiskey glass by his palate. Another passes the time at the parapet, naming the flowers in his mother's garden. Foxgloves, lupins, heart's ease, sweet pea. When I try to forget the smell of fermenting flesh, I see neighbours with pitchforks, rakes and sides between hedges scented by honeysuckle and wild rose. Lovely. Mm. Lovely. Thanks. Geraldine, okay. might you share um, a couple? Well, I, I was thinking I might read the, um, the second poem in, in the collection, which is it's just in five short, very short parts, but because of the, uh, the, the landscape and nature sort of theme, and 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 how we were talking about how 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 we hope to use it, or it to use us. Um, and I suppose this the sequence in a way follows the arc of the book, which is through. Um, I mean, the poem isn't you know autobiographical, but 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 a lot of the book is um, it follows an arc um, through lost um, and sort of emerging to a happier other side. So I'll I'll read landfall. Landfall. Stop. Your name on the locked piano lid, your voice quiet on the page. How long since we spoke? Blue bottles bounce words from room to room, old women's conversations from the dead. The wind trawls through lush mombrisha, stoppers the thrush's throat. Go. Wind tangles in rivers of air, catches on trees, carries sheep bleat, dog bark, lets them drop. I am strung round with sounds just out of meaning, a chance to think if I can hold off the prattle of starlings, the scolding gulls. Pause. No speech, no sound. My head hurts from the silence. Over the bay, snow flings its fraying upstrokes, grey on grey. A bird's underside catches the sun, angles its knife at my throat. Change. Scaldies toppled from their nest by nature's bully bird, a gawky changeling stranded in their place, no more convincing than Huck Finn in a frock, or wrists and eyebrows, making hangdog look happy. Poor plucked creature, feathers gone, how will you fly? Stay. The islands are sucked dim this morning, stirred pots of grey and green and black, their turn for darkness. Light colours our hill and the reeds behind the shore. Avocado and lime, fresh baked biscuit, a spill of gold. And a surge towards happiness, such as Heaney said he felt, emerging into sunlight from the cold heart of the stone of Galerus. And there was a, uh, you mentioned a new poem that you might 
Well, it's a poem that I that I wrote. Um, it, it 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 is one of the, uh, the the a memory poem, if you like, and it's something that uh, 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 that happened when I lived in um, in Algeria in Algeria, and which troubled me at the time and and went on troubling me. It was actually shortlisted in Strokestown in 2015, I think. So it's not that new, but it hasn't been. It's not in the collection, um, and I think it's it's self-explanatory. Um, the Request, Algiers, 1976. The moment still scalds after all these years, opening the door to find you there with flowers, the sun behind your head, heat and dust gusting into my flat, a look of fear, Palestine, home lost, and now this plea to give you a pass in your final English test. A small request, I have a home, a job, firm ground beneath my feet, surely not too much to ask. I stand on the threshold of my first floor flat, look at my feet, the moment still scalds, the sun behind your head, the dust, the heat. Thank you, and, and very timely to be reading that now mm. with, with uh, the events that have been happening. Mm. Um, but. It was current then when you wrote it and will mm, probably mm, be mm. current for years to come. That's the, the, the tragedy of it. Can can I ask you both what your next plans are? You've, you've, you, your book came out in 2017. Yeah, just a year ago. Yeah. So are you, um, you know, that question people dread, are you embarked on the next collection? Well, I'm, kind of, I'm kind of interested and, and quite excited that the way I write is changing. That I, I think, and now it's easier to say it because I could go home and, and, and get a, a, you know, a sort of un coup de cafard, as they say in French. I could get my self confidence go. But I really, I'm at a stage, I'm, I hope I don't, I don't mind so much what other people think. I'm, I'm finding themes that interest me and I'm just trying to write different hmm. versions of, this, of the same sort of um, um, idea or theme. No, I don't mean idea, but in a, a, a theme for a poem or a, a starting point. Um, and it's liberating when you aren't worried about other people. Yeah, I mean, as I say, it's hard to hold on to. <laughs> mm. And also, the other thing is that I've d done two sorts of collaborations, and I hope to do more. I have a an, an, an art exhibition which was in Kurch and was in Westport before, uh, with four artists responding to the poems, and that was really powerful. And I also do some work with a guitarist who's who's a composer in Lewisburg, and that again, it's it's what you learn. Mm. It's 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 the um, to quote my my Charles Wright again. He says, "There's no success in poetry. There's just the next inch, the next handhold out of the pit, oh, handhold <laughs> out of the pit." So there we are, sort of trying yeah. to climb up. Um, and I th I just love what you learn from collaborations, as, yeah. as you know. I mean, yeah. it's just. You 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 learn. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. That's me. And you mm -hmm. mentioned the the World War One poems. Is yeah. So I have two projects on at the moment. Well, one is my my own my second full length collection, and that's coming out in September twenty nineteen. So I'm working on that at mm -hmm. the moment. And then the other is this collaboration with the Mary Evans Picture Library in London. So they have an archive from a family of photographs and letters wow. of this soldier in the First World War who died about two months before the end of the war. And he was in almost four years after he joined. Um, so I've been working on that as well. So I, that will be out either next year or the year after, not quite sure yet. And is it difficult to, to stop the two from leading into each other or do you want, you know, how do you manage those parallel? It, yeah, it's, it's it, you know, sometimes I found, I found the work on the First World War project more difficult uh, because it's more separate from me and whereas, you know, I was writing for my own collection, I was very influenced by, you know, my, my father's illness and death recently. So I was just, the poems were just coming out and needing to be written and there was a real flow about that work. Mm. And then the other was more separate. Mm. And yet I think that I've channeled, you know, the anxiety of, you know, being beside my friend who was very ill and then my father being very ill. And I think that kind of anxiety, I was imagining what it's like for the sister of this man who was on yeah. First World War mm. and thinking, that's that mm. kind of yeah. anxiety. Mm. So mm. I think I've, and yeah. the grief after yeah. death. Yeah. 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 So I think actually I've channeled them both in, yeah. into yeah. the two yeah. projects. I hope, yeah. it, it, you know, in a, in a fruitful way, mm. Mm -hmm. you know, so. Um, 
So yeah, it's been very interesting. I've learned so much about the First World War. And somebody said to me lately, are you interested in battles? And I said, not at all, you know, mm -hmm. so it's not mm -hmm. the battles, it's the people, it's sure the goes. impact yeah. of war yeah. Yeah. on families, on individuals, yeah. on society, that they, sort of thing. You know, they talk about the 200,000 Irish men who, yes. who fought and, and, you know, multiply that by the yeah. five to 10 members of each yeah. individual's family. Mm -hmm. And, oh, you yeah, know, absolutely. It's, yeah. it's, it's enormous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And then that's a theme for today and tomorrow mm. and forever, mm. that mm. theme of the impact of mm. war and the madness of it. Mm. And, you know, so yeah. Great. it's been mm. very interesting, mm. yeah. Well, listen, thank you so much for taking the time to come and talk to us. Um, really looking forward to seeing what comes next. Um, that exhibition that, that uh, Geraldine mentioned, yeah. if it does come around to somewhere near you, go see it. I fell in love with the painting which I, I'm still in love with, but... Um, still on, still on till, till the beginning of June in Galway. In Galway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. You know, yeah. wonderful work. Um, so th thanks again. Thanks very great, much, Great Nessa. talk. Thank and you, Nessa. Thank you for watching. Um, we'll be back again um, with another topic which will be equally fascinating. I just don't know what it is yet. Anyway, thank you very much. I know just a dreamer, yes I know That I'm just a dreamer, I dream Cause it's the closest I'll ever get to you